Good morning, everybody. It's Mr. C, and welcome. It is Friday. It's an amazing day. It's end of the week. We've had an amazing week of learning together. So thanks for tuning in again today. I'm very excited to be here. We're doing owl pellets. Super duper awesome, super duper gross. We'll talk about all of that. I'm really excited about this one. This is a different kind of activity. Most of you probably don't have owl pellets laying around the house. I happened to order a couple um, a few months back to do a video. And now that we are hunkered down at home, I thought this would be really cool to do live. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than usual, but it'll be a lot of fun. So let's get started. We're talking owls today, and specifically owl pellets. Now, in my neighborhood, we have owls. I can hear them, they're hooting around all the time, especially at night on the cool fall days, and then the, they just, hoo, 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 hoo. Aw, did you hear that sound? I said, hoo, hoo, and my parent went, Arr. She's sleeping or dreaming or something. Um, but the owls, they, when they eat, they can't digest food the same way that we digest food. So before we get into how they actually digest, I have a picture of a food chain that I like to show you guys. So the food chain is a chain that illustrates how food and energy are passed through the system. So there's a single line of energy that's being transformed. So this starts with the sun. The sun gives energy to the plants, which use photosynthesis to produce their own food and grow. And then you have things like a field mouse um, that might be out eating that grass and it gets energy from the grass. And then all of a sudden you have this owl who swoops down, grabs that mouse and eats the mouse and absorbs the energy that the mouse had. And that's a food chain. So a food chain is a single path of energy flow. And then what we have sometimes, it's a little different, but it includes food chains, is a food web. And so what I've done here is I've drawn an additional organism in our food web and it's a snake. So now the energy can travel in multiple paths. The sun gives the plants the energy, the energy gets absorbed by the mouse when it eats the, the grass, and the owl swoops down and eats that mouse. Or the sun gives the energy to the plant, the plant gives the energy to the mouse, the snake's hanging around, it eats the mouse, and then that snake gets eaten by the owl or a bird of prey. Those are That's a food web. And so Today what we're gonna be talking about is specifically what happens when that energy gets passed all the way up to the owl. They eat a rodent of some sort, and then what they do is they actually regurgitate it. So what's really cool, I found a graphic online that illustrates to us what we're talking about when we have this owl. So owls don't have teeth. They have a beak, and they typically eat their prey whole. Okay, so the predator is what is going after the food, the prey is what is being eaten, all right? So the owl swoops down, grabs a small mouse or, or a critter, it then swallows it whole, and it has really two stomachs. It has the, I think I'm saying this correctly, the proventriculus, that's the first stomach, and then the second one is the ventriculus, or what we call the gizzard. And in the first stomach, that owl is putting digestive juices all around the rodent it just ate and it starts to break it down and then it slides into the gizzard, the second stomach, and then the muscles from that are squeezing and working all the juices of the, the prey and eventually it absorbs all of those things into its system but owls can't digest bones and fur and things like that. So what they do is after they've eaten, that's in their gizzard and eventually when they're due to eat again and get more energy, they Blah, they spit it up, they regurgitate it. And that's what this is. And that's what I'm holding. I'm holding an owl pellet. This is from a barn owl, barn owl, B-A-R-N. And I'm gonna open it up. And I know it's gonna be dark and people are gonna think, ooh, it looks gross. It kinda is, but that's all the fur from this. And these have been disinfected. All right, so we can handle them. And what I have is just a skewer stick. And what we're gonna do is we're going to actually start to break this apart. And you can see instantly, there are all these little bones that pop out. Now, before we get too far into this, we have a bone identification chart that we wanna put up on the screen for you. 
and we have here it looks like a mouse skeleton or a shrew but then here we have all of these different things so we have a possible bird so owls do sometimes eat smaller birds so we have possible we could maybe find a bird skeleton today a mouse skeleton a shrew and a, or a mole I have no idea what we're gonna find I don't know if we're gonna I mean obviously we were finding some bones already and as we find some bowl, bones I will try to identify them I'm just gonna pull out a couple to see what we get I'm hoping we find a skull sometimes I used to do this activity with my ooh, I used to do this activity with my students when I was a fifth grade science teacher. And sometimes we would get lucky and we would find multiple skulls inside of one pellet. And basically all that means is that the owl ate multiple um, prey and digested them simultaneously. So I see, I don't have a good pair of tweezers that I was allowed to use. <laughs> I was vetoed in the house by by the girls saying I wasn't allowed to use the tweezers for this today. So we're making do with what we have. And that's really what this show is all about, is that we have the ability to... Oh, cool. I think I have a skull right here. I'm trying to get to it without breaking it. Oh, I have a skull. It's a small skull. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see that? Am I in a good spot? You're in a good spot, but it's just very tiny. It is tiny. Come a little closer to the photograph to your camera. I will. I will. Here in a second. Let me get some of this fur out. I'm going to get... I also have a screwdriver to as a little sharper of a point that I can get some of this fur out. Oh, that's a baby skull. Sometimes they're ginormous. Maybe we'll be lucky. Maybe we'll get a second skull. Oh, there we go. That's a baby. Look how small it is. Um, can you see that? If I just leave it sit there, can you zoom in on it? Um, move it back just a little bit. Back. Towards me? It's so tiny. It's yeah. super tiny. Woo! Can you see that? Yeah, it's just hard to tell what it is on camera. That's so on here, if we we'll take... take some pictures. We'll take some pictures and get some close-ups, but it definitely looks, if we're using our bone chart... If you bring it over here, Mrs. C. Oh, I don't know. It's gonna be hard to see. It definitely looks like a mouse skull, for for sure. Here, come up to the. F it's so small. All right, let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. What I think, if maybe we might just get lucky, we might have another skull over here. That's a small little skull. That's telling me that that bird. Maybe it was a small, but that was a huge pellet. It really was. So we've got some other other bones here. I'm hoping we can find some vertebrae here soon. They're so cool. Bless you. Ooh. I think I just found a, I found a hip bone. I'm going to set it over here. Well, let's try to zoom in on this one just for a second. You stay kind of zoomed in a little bit. Okay. Can you see that? So we've got ourselves a little mouse bone. If we need to adjust the cameras, we can get them closer. If we need to put it right here in the shot, we can. Do you want to do that? Do you want to bring this camera down? No, I think we're okay. All right. I think we can see the hip bone. All right, let's see what else we got. I'm hoping... I hope we have another skull. So you might be thinking, why are you doing this, Mr. C? And realistically, I'm doing this. Ooh, ooh. I found the bottom half of the jaw. That's so cool. We will, after today's stream, we will go through and we will take really close pictures of these so you guys can see them really well. Maybe we'll get enough parts to actually um, build the skeleton out. That would be really cool. These are rib bones. They're really hard to see, but I'll pull them over here in a second. Can you hold them right where they are right now? In my hand? Yeah, then that's kind of where the... Is that the focus? Okay. It's, it's tight on it. You can see them. So I'll, I'll bring, I'll work right here.
I know what someone's going to ask me. They're going to say, if I find an owl pellet, should I dissect it? No. These are sterilized. So they've been heated and sanitized so that we can handle them. Ooh, another hip bone. That's a bigger one. Ooh, what's this? I think I've, I'm hoping I found something. Well, I know I found something. Oh, it is just fur. It's kind of gross, but it's really cool. Super cool. We need like music. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's see what else we got in here. There's something, it looks like a couple of, so there's all these little rib bones that are really hard to see. I'm trying to be gentle so I don't break anything. Well, that's a pretty hefty looking bone. That looks, this looks like a back leg for sure. I think I found a back leg. So we're finding all sorts of parts to the rodent. Here's another, oh, look at that, that's cool. That looks like, I wanna say that's a shoulder blade. Looks very similar to a shoulder blade. Shoulder, blah, shoulder blade. And you know, while I'm doing this, I wanted, to, oh, what did I find? I think this could be a shoulder blade. No, this looks like a hip bone, again. All right, so we're finding like multiple hip bones. And if I'm looking at this mouse diagram over here, there's two hip bones and I have more than two and they're different sizes. So maybe there were more than one rodents in this pellet or in the gizzard of this owl. But what I wanted to say, what I was about to say is we're going to put a link in to the description after the di live dissection today, and you can go online and do a virtual dissection. We found a website that you guys can try this at home virtually, and I thought it would be really cool for you guys to have that opportunity. Um, you can also check out some cool books and read all, all sorts of things about owls. Okay, we're making a big mess. There's tons of rib bones in here. This is where a, a pair of tweezers would be really helpful, Mrs. C. <laughs> You know what we haven't found any of? Our vertebrae. So the backbone. But the, the, the ribs are just popping out left and right. Here we go. I think that's part of the skull, maybe. No. I'm not sure what that was, if anything. All right, here we go. Got to just go through it. How lucky am I to be able to dissect an owl pellet with you guys today? All right, I found another part to a back leg. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, I was hope. Oh, I think I found the other half to the jaw right here. You'll see it coming out right there. See that? There it is. That is, oh, did I find another skull? Is this a whole skull? I found another skull. I found another skull. I knew, I knew there would be more than one. Look at this. Oh, it's like intact. It's still intact. That is so awesome. There's our skull. I'm gonna try to get some of this fur out of the face here. There is the lower jaw. Here's our upper part. Here is the eye, it looks like what would be the eye cavity. I'm gonna turn this around. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Yes, 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 yes. I love it when we find more than one rodent inside of an owl pellet. It tells me that the owl probably is a bigger critter um, because it's looking for more food, right? It's searching for more food, hunting more food. I'm just making that hypothesis there. I'm not 100% sure. I wish I don't have a pet owl. 
Oh my gosh, this the skull is so tender, like when you touch it. In all of my years, I was a fifth grade science teacher for seven years before I went into administration, which I became a principal. Um, and I have never, ever found a bird skull in an owl pellet. And if any of my students are out there watching this, my former students, I can't, I don't think we ever found any. So it's always exciting to at least get more than one skull. But you know what I'm really interested about is I can't find, I haven't seen any vertebrae. And typically after these owl pellets, you have, you have enough vertebrae to actually build the entire skeleton. And what we would do sometimes is we would take these and we would literally take like a transparency sheet and then we would glue them onto the transparency sheet and then build a skeleton. Um, I'm gonna get another one, one that's a little sharper. All right, so I think that's as clean as I can get it with what I have here. Look at that though. Here, I'm gonna bring the other one back over. That is, that's a decent sized skull. Look at that. And then here's the other one. Teeny tiny little rodents. I think they're, I think they're both mice too. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the shrew, the shrew doesn't look like, the shrew and the mole don't look like they have these eye sockets right here. Um, but yeah, look at that. Those are the, those are the heads. Oh, where did my other jawbone go? Hmm, I'm missing a jawbone. So let's keep digging. I have this big part of this pellet here. Here's some part of the skull right here. I'm just gonna set it over there. Let's bring this back here. I've got all these ribs, tons and tons of ribs. Oh, is this an, there's no way that this is another skull. No. What is that? I think it was part of the skull, but it kind of, I don't know what that is. All right, here we go. This looks, I might be crazy, but this looks and feels like there might be another skull about to pop out of this. This would be like the jackpot. Come on. Come on. Ooh, it's really, it's really tough. I could, I could have sprayed it with a little bit of water. <gasps> No, I don't think it's a full skull. I think it's part of the skull, but I don't know if it's part of the other one. Oh, my fingers. So it looks, definitely looks like it's part of the skull, but it just, it's not a whole part. There's a little piece of the skull. So I'm gonna go through here I've got more ribs. I haven't found, this might be a front leg. It's hard to tell between the back legs and the front legs. All right, let's get through this last big chunk and then we're gonna get rid of a lot of this stuff off the table. Ooh, I know if you're still watching with us, you might be thinking to yourself, this is a perfect video to watch like while we're eating lunch together. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm teasing. You can talk about food chains. Speaking of which, you can talk about food chains. You can talk about where your food came from. You know, are you eating plants? So are producers, um, if you're eating chicken, what did the chicken eat before you had the chicken? You can have some really cool conversations about those types of things. What did we find here? We found the other part of our jaw. Look at that, with due diligence. So we have two skulls. 
and we officially have two, two pairs of jaws now. So we have our jaws, super cool, and they match up. So we have the bigger and then the smaller pair. How cool is that? Oh, we've got a question. Oh, what's the question? So Zach wants to know, can an owl eat a snake? So I drew that in my food web. We just had this discussion. And we were talking about that before we came on air because I was, I meant to draw a hawk in my food web also to swoop down to get the snake. Um, I don't know if they technically eat snakes, but I, I could imagine that they might, maybe a small one. I'm going to have to do some research. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to have to do some research. I drew that just to make a web. And now I'm thinking, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So we're going to have to do some research on that. So Zach, was it Zach? So Zach, if you are watching this, because we're still digging through this owl pellet and we're going to organize it a few for a few more minutes. Maybe you can hop online and see if owls actually eat snakes. And then they'll report back to us. That would be so cool. And if you can't do it right now, you could do it later and we'll, we'll do that part also. All right, so I think officially, that's a good, that was a really good question. Speaking of snakes, we found a snake in our yard the other day. It was a garter snake. And we were picking up branches so we could mow the grass, and it just slithered right over my hand. I screamed so loud. <laughs> it was, I was so scared. It was it was only like two feet long, but I screamed so loud. It was so scary. All right, so we've gone through our pellet. It looks as if our... Now, obviously I have to go through this much more carefully to get more and more of the bones. There are very small, fine bones in there. I'm going to guess I maybe just came across... I don't know what these are. I think these are the teeth. I've got these little teeny, teeny, teeny little bones. All right, we've got a question. All right, what's the question? So Benjamin wants to know what all that fuzzy stuff is. Is it feathers, fur? How is it of all of that stuff? All right, Benjamin, that is a fantastic question. So I'm going to repeat the question just so everybody can hear it. The question was, is what is all of this stuff and how is it like a ball? All right, so I'm going to open this. I'm not going to take this one apart. But so this, oh, whoa, what is that? Okay, I'm not going to take it apart. I want to, but I'm not going to take it apart. So this, all of this is fur from the mouse that the owl ate. So here, here, I'll hold it right here so you can see it all. That is fur from the mouse that the owl ate. The mouse, when it goes into the owl's belly, the owl can't digest the fur. So the stomach of the owl is squeezing and squeezing and squeezing the remains of the mouse. And basically, this pellet is formed because all of the juices, all of the soft parts of the mouse get digested by the owl. The owl needs energy, so that's why it eats this mouse. These are all the parts from the mouse that the owl can't digest in its system. So what it does, squeezes and squeezes and squeezes and squeezes and eventually when it gets hungry again it says oh I got to get that out of my stomach and then it does this it goes Bleh! and it spits that out and it spits this owl pellet that's why they call it an owl pellet so this is regurgitated leftover mouse parts or it depends on what was inside of this that's what the owl ate so this is actually fur the outside part of the mouse, the fur, the soft part. Okay. That was a great question. All right. We've already got some researchers on. All right. What do we got? What do we got? So Zach went ahead and found out and we, other people are looking it up. They said that owls are opportunistic. So they will eat anything they can find and that can include snakes, but owls, it's not, snakes aren't their main source of food. All right. So excellent research, my little scientists out there. Owls are opportunistic. That that. So thank you families for doing that. Yeah, that means that they're on the hunt for food 
which makes sense. They're looking for food. If it's a little rodent running around, they're going to go after it. If they happen to see a little snake, they'll be like, yo, what's up, little snake? You're going to be my din-din tonight. They go for it. Um, they're, they're hungry, right? So they're going to they're gonna go out and get energy so that they can survive. They're not picky eaters. They're not picky eaters. This guy here, picky, picky eater. You would never catch me eating a snake. <laughs> or a lot of vegetables. But I'm working on that. All right, so we have all sorts of cool parts. You guys are awesome today helping us out out there. It's hard to hop online and do stuff while we're... Because I don't want to touch anything else right now anyway. Um, so we've got... I've got some shoulder blades here. I'm trying to find, I think, I think I just found a front leg. So look at this. We have, we have parts from all of them, but the vertebrae, I haven't, I have not been able to identify, pull up my glasses for a second, get down low. Is that a vertebrae? Could be. There is, it's super hard. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I think I found a vertebrae. So I think I found a little vertebrae. But yeah, we have all of these parts. Back leg. We have, it looks like, this is definitely, this is definitely a hip bone. Gosh, it's so small. I wish I could. We're going to take close-up pictures and we'll add them to the post. But you can see the socket where the leg bone gets connected to the hip bone and the hip bone gets connected to the tail bone. I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So we have all of these different body parts. Oh, this is so cool. Ribs. There are just ribs everywhere. Seriously. Um, there are ribs everywhere. And I think these might be little teeny tiny vertebrae because that one little skeleton was so small. I think I found a couple of vertebrae. Yeah, these have to be vertebrae. Uh-oh. Our ferret wants out. She is ready to play. She's like, this is my playtime after the TV show. All right, here we go. We've got, I think this would be another backbone. I get it. All right. So there is our selection of bones. We've got our skulls. We ended up with two skulls. These are so cool. We've got four jaws. So two pairs each. We've got some shoulder blades. We've got some front leg parts. And I'm sure if I had a nice little magnifying glass or something to look at these closer. I could probably identify them a little bit better. Uh, we have our hip bones, for sure. Those are, I think I can recognize those pretty well. And the back legs, some different parts there. And then our ribs. And we have tons of ribs over here still that I haven't even transferred over to the sheet. They're just, it's just loaded with them. There are tons of ribs. Oh, there we go. Ah falling off my hand there we go and then I think these little guys right here are vertebrae I'm pretty sure they are because I was looking over here on this other sheet and they kind of look like those as well so yeah this is what we get to do on a Friday morning together we get to dig through an owl pellet that was regurgitated by a barn owl to see what kind of critters it was eating and oh something really cool like if, a, if an owl gets a creature that it can't swallow whole it uses its beak to tear it into pieces and then eats it. How awesome is that? So cool. So cool. If you like that activity and want to see more egg experiments, make sure you like and subscribe. See you soon.